So today I'm working on a painting that I did several years ago and that sold to a lovely buyer and uh, I've decided to put it into a video to show more of a loose technique and a bit of perspective. So here's the original painting. Oops, let's go back here. Here's the original painting and we also have um, the original picture here that I took when I was in Guadalajara. You can see here, you can see me more. And so if you notice, I tried to bring out the colors of the street scene a little bit more and changed a bit of the perspective so that it wasn't quite as narrow as you see there. I kind of drew it out a bit. And so that's what we're going to do today. One of the things that I don't talk a lot about in my uh, videos is I show you how I'm mixing things but I'm not actually suggesting that you always pre-mix your colors and today I thought it would be a good idea to show you the pre-mixing aspect and put some of the palettes colors here so that one of the things if you do that you will know that you've got an excellent um, range of colors already pre-made and you're not going to end up dipping into something that you might have thought, well, I think I can use this, and then it may actually throw your whole palette off. Because you shouldn't really use more than six colors in a palette scheme. Or if you're going to use your primaries, which I have been using in many of my, uh, so primaries meaning that there's just three colors that you mix everything else with. You can't see that through there. Um, then you you continue that combination and by mixing them all together you keep everything unified because you, those are the only real three colors that you're using but you're making the other colors from that. If you are actually using your proper colors that are already pre-mixed and you start adding in this color and that color you start to actually de-unify the picture and it makes it harder to keep it together. Now having all said all that, in this photograph uh, and in this painting that I did I kept it simple. I didn't put in a blue sky so that I had more whites, which you can kind of see in my black and white image here. Um, so I kept the sky white because it was a polluted sky so that there was really no use. I kept this fairly white and I just added splashes a little bit of, of hints of color in there afterwards. I also kept this sidewalk a little darker because it was closer, but I also left this sidewalk quite white as well. and That helped. Another building here helped. So the more whites you can keep in your picture, without having to mask them or anything, but just to consider them the lightness and stuff. And even in my bougainvillea here, it'll help if I can keep some whites in here too. And uh, and yet I don't want to keep it very tight. And, and it's always harder when you're working with a small sheet. And I am working with a little bit over a quarter of a sheet. I've just elongated it so that you can actually, I can have some space here to, to do some painting colors and I've left some extra space on here. So depending on the size it's always easier when you go larger to make it looser and, and as soon as you make a big scene like this into a smaller space you're going to tend to tighten up so you've got to watch that um, a good way to do that is like having the items pre-mixed uh, having everything wet and then just splashing on color and doing layers of it and it'll help you a lot so having said that i have my original tracing here uh, I thought I would do it in pen and ink on here so that I have an image that you can look at. We've got the black and white that I took it from and then I've got my painting on the side. So uh, I'm just going to go and find the colors that I want and we'll talk about them. I'm ready now to show you what colors I'm going to use in my mix. I have on this tray a little bit of phthalo blue which has I've been touched up with a bit of uh, yellow so that's why it's looking a little greenish. I have a handsome me yellow medium and I have a Quinn pink made by Daniel Smith which has just disappeared off of my... here it is. So it's a Quinn pink so that's going to be my base for my, my reds and I've made my purple out of that little bit of phthalo and the quin pink, so I've got that. I've made my green out of my other color, which is raw sienna, which I've brought in. Raw sienna is a great color to use transparently. It doesn't, uh, it mixes well with other colors and it can create a lot of features that I need for this to keep it warm and, uh, and add in that brick feeling, because if I mix that with my 
quin pink I will get a brickish orange depending on how much I use I can always bring in a little bit of yellow if I need to bring it up a little bit more I can also bring in a little bit of phthalo to build up that brown if I need to because I need a little bit of brown in here I will use my phthalo as my teal and the way to do that is just pop in a tiny tiny bit of yellow probably the Rossiana yellow to make it that way let's just see if I do that if I just do that here my phthalo I've almost got it right there but if I just touch it with a little bit of raw sienna it's not much of my brush let's see if I can make that a little bit more of the teal that's a bit strong but I think we can make that work today I'm also using a new brush that I wanted to try out which is my da Vinci 2 spin synthetic I finally picked up these Da Vinci's. I'm actually going to try another one as well which is a 10 Da Vinci and I'm quite excited about it. It also is a Cosmo top spin so these are the two I'll be working with plus my other smaller brushes should I need to. So I've basically set this up but I haven't put those colors on the side of my palette here so let's do that first. So here's my picture and the first thing is that I want to have the Quinn Pink Let's, let's make it a little darker here too and I'll find a pencil and I'll write that down that's quinacridone pink quinacridone pink and I'll just put a little DS for Daniel Smith and then um, I am going to be then using the mixture of the raw sienna I have to clean my brush Sienna from the top, put a little bit more here. There we go. That's Rossiana. That's actually just a Cotman Rossiana. I know I have other Rossianas around, but do you think I could find it when I want it? So I'm happy with this one at this point. Rossiana. What happens with the Cotman series? It, it doesn't have as much pigment. But I'm happy with the way it's working with my other colors based on the testing that I did, so I'm not worried about that and that is a cotton and then I'm using my Hansa yellow medium which I've just popped away somewhere here and it is more like a cadmium it's warmer there it is right there so let's bring that in make sure the brush is clean and drop that in see that's a nice warm yellow and I do have one building that is like that. Probably that's even too warm. Uh, but we've got that. So that's my Hansa Yellow Medium. Also a Daniel Smith. And we're going with the Phalo. Right here. The Phalo Blue Green Shade. And I believe that's a Windsor Newton. And based on all those colors right there, I haven't had to do any more. There's just four colors that I'm going to be using. And I made up the purple that I'm going to want just by mixing in the Quinn Pink with the Phalo Blue so that I get that nice, what I would call a diazonine purple. I could actually bring it in back into more of a magenta style or darken it with a little bit more of the phthalo but it'll give me that nice purple feature that I want for the top of my building to go with the green. Now the green was a little bit harder because I ended up if I go straight from the, these two colors to make the green I'll make a very vibrant green. I would really want more of a olive green. Um, this was a really interesting color here so I've already made it and hopefully I will have enough of it based on that. So that's my purple and I'm just going to say purple mix and that's my green mix and I will try and keep this green mix uh, using it as well for my leaves of my bougainvillea but I'll pop in a little bit of extra phthalo to add in some darks I can even add the purple into that um, you can also neutralize it with your opposite colors so 
the opposite to a green would be a red or in this case the pink so that I can neutralize it that way. So the only other color I think that I had to mix up here that I see was a teal and I did that by just taking a little bit of the phthalo which is still contaminated right now. Hold on, let's clean that up. Get some of that off. So I took just a little bit of it and the yellow and I tried to stick to more of the phthalo to get a bit of that tealish color there. So that's the teal and that's on one of the buildings. And then I should mention the brown. Well the brown is actually a little bit of the pink, quin pink, with a little bit of the yellow and then a, just a hint of the blue. Now that's gone to green so you got to go back into the original color and add some more of that. Now that's a lovely green but I need to add a little bit more yellow. Still not quite what I want. I'm still way on the on the green side. Too green. Back to my pink. Let's try and get that to more of a close now. Almost more of a gray. Let's put in some of the raw sienna here. Close, 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 but no cigar. Let's try and pick up some of this again. And some of this again. This has just too much yellow in it and it's got a great green. I don't think I'm going to be able to get there at this point. So we'll leave it like that and if I have to I'll come back in and add a bit more of the blue once it's not so contaminated there. But I've got all these other colors that I want to use so I'm not going to try and change that now. The idea would be you get to your purple, you add a little bit of the yellow, you get a nice brown. Um, but I'm just seeing too much. Look at how it's, even though it's blue, it's really going to, run to a turquoise color. Let's try and see if that'll... No, it's just greening up. Totally greening up. Okay, but here I actually ended up having it more of it. Let's just bring that over here then. I'm pulling in some of that. There we go. Now we got it. Pretty much our brown. There it is. Can you see that? Nope, not quite. There's the brown. Brown. And we will bring in the gray afterwards for the um, little features of... Uh, and I haven't decided if I'm going to mix the gray. I have my Payne's gray here somewhere in my little tickle trend. I also... Where is my Payne's gray? I had it out. Can you believe it? It's right here and I can't see it. Anyways. I'll point that out later when I'm finally doing the dark details. So now we have our colors and we can start having some fun. So what's going to happen is we're going to do some individual colors here. We're going to try and leave this area white. We're going to try and leave this area white and we're going to have some fun with the gray at the base here. So how do we keep it loose? Well we wet some of the area and play with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by wetting my purple building. So the purple's at the top here and the green is down here. And then suddenly it changes to brick. And there's a couple of little items here. So let's just loosely put that on there. Oops, I've just gone over a bit to the next area. And saying that now, I should mention to you that sometimes if you wet the whole thing and then let it size up a bit, it can be very helpful. So I'm going to do that this time. I'm actually going to take my hake brush, drip it into the water, and I'm going to actually wet everything for the moment. And that'll take some of the sizing off of the paper. and will help me keep a little bit more of the looseness that I'm looking for. Okay, so having done that, if I was to drop the green in, I'd have to be very careful at the moment that I didn't just let it spread everywhere. So I'm gonna leave it for the moment. What I can do is I can take some of this lovely pink, quin pink, and I can just have some fun with it for the bougainvillea. Let's do that.
So with Bougainvillea, they have some really long, beautiful stems that have gorgeous color on the stems, and then the rest can be quite intense because they have to trim it back all the time. So let's just have some fun with this one in the front because it has quite a bit of color on it. Okay, and on the other one, there was one down here that I can definitely just pop in some color. I could even put some color in to unify all the bougainvillea everywhere here. I have a lot of just color here. Whoa! Just added some extra color in there that I wasn't expecting, but let's have fun with it. And in order for my little happy accident, I'll just dab a little bit of that out. Okay, so we've done that. One of the other things I can do since I'm at it is make sure I've got enough purple here. That's a bit too blue. We're almost there. Okay. And I can very carefully go right along here. See how it just kind of spreads everywhere? So the other thing to do is just to drop in a little bit in here. And there really isn't a lot of other purple anywhere within the whole process. So now what do I do with those beautiful escaping little colors up there? You try and capture them. Now I have to, I, you should dry your brush. So I'm just going to pull that down a bit. Pull this down a bit. Because there is a little bit of green on top of this building, so I have to let that... Okay, but that gives you the idea of the looseness that you can do. There's also some brick behind here, but if I go in there now, it's going to spread way too much for what I want. So, unintentionally, but I'm going to have to work on the base. Um, I happen to have some gray already mixed in here. So I am just going to use this gray that's in here. Oh, there you are. It happens to be the right level of gray. I'll warm it up just a tad more if I need to, but I'll just show you just along here what the gray, oh, that's perfect. There's the gray. I think you can see that, but you may not be able to see all of this. Okay, so this is just a perfect, It's it's no. there's no more sheen on it or anything, but what I don't want to use is this particular brush. I am going to wet it again and wet it a bit in here. And I will try this other Da Vinci brush that I've got with this edge on it. Let's see how that works. And all I really want to do is, is get a little bit of the gray in here. Because I have only actually a little bit of shadow over here. I don't even have much. Picking it up. Ooh, it picks up beautifully. And all I want to do is kind of do streaks down the road here at the moment. And I'll add some darks later. This is a little bit more pinky, reflecting the pink from the bougainvillea bush. So I could actually pick up some of this pink, which you can see, put it in here, and then just gray it up by adding a little bit of my other colors here. So graying is just adding in the yellow, the pink and the blue together and I'll just pick up some of this blue here and we've got a gray. So back to just adding a tinge more pink and we're just gonna layer that down here. Careful not to get over. Uh, let's do a little more pink here. It's really dry already. 
incredible. Now that I know that, that it's dried so fast, I can actually start doing some other things. That's a bit wet in the center. Aha, aha, aha. Okay. So counting back over my buildings, this is a bit brick. I'm going to go back to my original photograph. And this is actually a bit peachy here, although when I did it, I did not. Well, I made it a tiny bit peachy. So where is that? Uh, here is, there's just a little bit of a, not quite as pink as I want. So let me just bring that over here a bit. There it is. That's the pinkiness. I am just going to come in and drop that beautiful little bit of pinkiness here behind my bush and down below here. And I'm just checking because there's actually a doorway just behind here too. Okay, I'm happy with that. don't need to do anything more with that, but I do need a bricky color. So having done that here, I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow in here. Go back here with a little bit of that and see if I can get... Mm, I need some of that brown. Okay, that's now that's too muddy. So uh, let's see if I can pick up this and see what happens. We're close, but a little bit of mud there. Let's try this. No, not, not quite what I want. I want more on the orangey side. Not quite so muddy. But having said that, let's try it. And let's just pop a little bit of brick in there. Because what I could do afterwards, if i careful, it just kind of comes straight up over here. And just falls off the page, basically. Okay. I can come back with my little bit and see and add just a bit more of intensity by just going straight to my color and warming it up that way. Okay, now there is a little bit of more of that building right around here. So I'm just going to pop that same color in, but with a little bit more red. Perfect. A little more red. And that only actually goes up to there. It doesn't actually continue. The rest of the building is white. But there, the next to it is a green. And then after that, right in here, is a bit of a variation of more of that color in there. It actually comes up under this patio area where the green is and then carries on, and I need just a little bit more about that warm color. Okay, just to there. To make it interesting. Okay, so we've carried a little bit of color there, and down here somewhere it's just a little extra, so then we pop one of those, that little bit of color in. Threes are a great idea for composition. And if we add a little bit of a lot of color and lighten it up down here, that's, that's a great idea. Okay, now that we've done all that, we can come back in and actually do the green. And the green covers everything else here. All the way to here, and it's dry enough that I can just go straight underneath here. Oh, 
I'm so loving this brush. It's coming right underneath here. Just got to be careful. Um, picking up as much as I can. So I'm going to have to just quickly make some more with a little bit of the raw sienna as well. That's too dark. That's too dark. Go back and yellow it up. Okay. Add a little bit of water. Let me see how that looks first. Does it match my green mix? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go right back in here. dark but it is it's actually quite dark underneath here there's a bit of a shadow from the trees so I'm not dis satisfied with that so let's just continue and I'm just going around these electric areas here okay I see more shadow in here so let's bring some of that color back in here here bring it in here okay and there's a little bit more of that color just underneath here okay so this is definitely darker let's wait till it dries let's get into that little bit of teal And that teal happens to be just above here, which is interesting. Just trying to see. There's a, I should have, oh, it's actually that color all the way through, okay. And a little bit around here. And then it's a doorway of some sort. Oh, and when there's a patio here, I think. So because I forgot, I'm just going to cover that with it right there. Because that's a good mix between the oranges and the blues. I'm okay with that. Um, do I see any other color like that down there? No. Let me go back to my fun one. Did I put it anywhere in there? I did actually carry it up here. I'm going to do that. And you know what? Just remember, it helps to have a little bit of that extra color in other places. Let's drop a little bit of color in there. We make the building a little higher. And I can't really see, except it might really be nice. I go back to the original. When I did my, oh, perfect. When I did my original painting, I just made this gray, but this color not too dark. If I just add a little more water, it'll be a great area in here for the windows. I can always darken it up, but I like it. Wonderful. Okay, so you can see that? Yeah, all right. Um, so one of the things I noticed, I can't do anything here yet, still too wet, way too wet. Um, this is a bit of a grayish color up here. This is also a little darker gray. We've got the trees that we've got to fill in, but we have this yellow building that I can actually do. And that is a combination of that beautiful yellow we've got here with a little bit of raw sienna just so that it's more of a mustardy color, which is one of the best colors that you see when, on houses in Mexico. Perfect. Right in there. There'll be some windows and things over top, but we're just going to get that nice color popped in there. And it's a little lighter underneath. 
So I'm just going to let the water there. No, that's too much. And just drop it a little bit in there. That's very interesting. And I'm going to just lay that down and let that just go underneath here a bit and drop it back in there. Okay, and you can see that? Yeah, very good. Going back to my other one. Um, there is actually a very light color here, but it's also like the raw sienna that I've got in everywhere else, which I just kind of, is this wet? Yeah, it's still a bit wet. All I did was just touch it a little bit with raw sienna in some of these areas just to give it that, oops, that's too much, just to give it that warmth feeling without overwhelming the building, even though it is kind of yellow. I can actually... Now that I think about it, which I didn't do, it's a, it could be a little bit warmer in here. But that looks too yellowy for me. I should have done it with the Rossiana, so I'm just going to soften that up. And it could be a little bit under the roof a little bit. Touch it. Oh, that's too much. Don't make sure you mix it before you put it at it. Just under here a bit. I'll lift that up. Okay. So another thing, just to carry that yellow across here, there was this beautiful mustardy kind of yellow down here where they had sort of painted the sidewalk uh, edge, you know, as a, as a hazard kind of thing. But then it, it was peeling off or whatever. So there wasn't much there. And I'm just going to check, I think... I'm not mistaken. There may have been a little bit down here. This is actually a road area, so let's put it just... There's still some left. Let's pop it in there. Okay, it's coming together. I could even, very carefully, just put a little bit of a hint of raw sienna on this building right here. Not too much. Just gonna soften that up a bit. No more than that. And like I said, this is a bit gray. I don't want to go with the grays yet. Okay. But having said all that, I think I think I can go back and do the purples. Let's go back here. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit more carefully. Well, that's strong. I don't know if you, no, you can't see that. And now I can go and I can add a little bit of purple in here. In here. Um, there's definitely some dark underneath here. And definitely this seems to be an, uh, like the upper edge was even further out, but I'll probably have to do that a few more times. What's interesting is I put the purple in the window here. Let's take some of that color. Doesn't look as purple as I would like it to. There's some purple there. Let's purple that down a bit more. Okay. And some purple on the side there. I'm just trying to check. There seems to be a hint of the purple into the windows down below here too. So I have that big purple there. Oh, that's too red. How far does it come down? It comes down quite a bit actually. 
And this is actually a doorway. So I'm going to come right in there with the door. And this plant seems to be sitting at the edge of the doorway, so I'm not going to go as far as that. So I'll leave it like that for now. But I do notice that I haven't got the green top that goes with the rest of the building. So I'm going to now do that. And it's right up in here. And goes back. Like that. All right. Then I see some other little things that I can do. But I'll leave those for a bit later. Because I'm just looking to see what colors I actually... I left that pretty much almost a grayish. Um, what have I got? Oh, quite, a white, quite a bit of white there. So I think... I think what have I got? I'm going to do a little bit of purple. Let's put a great compliment to yellow is purple. Let's just pop in a little bit of purple in this one. Can you see it? Yes. I'm just going to pop a little purple building there. And orange. That's a good compliment to orange. If you're looking at your color wheel, it's in between. And orange would be going across the other way to kind of a tealy area, which is those two are actually good complements for each other. So, why not pop a little more green into there? Since we have the opportunity, I'll put the green just down there. And then I can always pop some gray in there or something, I'm not sure. So let's work now on the actual, uh, we're not gonna do any more detail at this point. There's all sorts of nice details that we're gonna come into. Well, let's work on the green of the actual bougainvillea. The first thing I like to do is add in a little bit of mix of the yellow. And I want to look at the original because some of this area had some really nice, just light yellow here where the, where the light was coming down. Just up in this area. I have some shadows to do in there eventually too. So let's start with that light those little light leaves up there. Um, don't necessarily see it. We're just going to pop in a little bit. Do I see a lot of it? So there's kind of some lights in there. You're not going to see much. It's too small. So I'm going to go straight to that green and I'm just going to green it up a bit. Let's see how strong that green is. I'll add just a little bit of raw sienna to it. Okay, and so here we're just being a little more careful about how it's looking. I'm making sure we have some contrast. I may have to bring up the pinks a bit more here. That's a bit too bluish. I'm going to have to put a little bit of darker color in there. Oh, that does look good. Whoops. Got a little carried away. There are some really nice darks in here. even kind of a bit of shadow there. Let's 
get some more yellow in there and some raw sienna. Whoa, that's a little bit too much raw sienna. Okay. Add a little bit more water. I could spray this in even a little bit more just to loosen it up a bit. We can also bring that dark green that I happen to have there. Pop it in here. Because this is all shadowed in here, so I, I will have to deal with that in a bit. Definitely more shadow underneath there, too. Just going to dry that. Let's go back to my other brush, although I really love the tip on that. And now let's bring in that nice dark color that I have here. Let's see if I can't just add some of the shadows on the bottom here. Go back to my picture. Okay, this is where the paint's gray becomes a real blessing because what happens is when you put that paint's gray in there it actually just goes a bit green because there's some yellow in the paint and so you don't even know that it's paint's gray until you really need to make it darker and so I'm going to make this a bit darker in here okay no more yet, and I will come back in with a little bit more of the pink. So, what am I going to do? I want to come back in. I, this was originally, there's the brown. Let's brown this up here now. Oops, too much pink. Add the blue. Now it's purple. Add the yellow, which is almost completely gone. And we've got almost a gray. What I want to do is add the stems here of the bougainvillea tree. And in this one, it's actually, there's also kind of a wire around there too. It's really funky how the, they twisted the little bit of bougainvillea bush around. Not that you're gonna really see much of that branch in there. Um, what was here? Oh yeah. So we'll bring the bougainvillea bush down here. They were really tight up against the. So there's actually three, but that's still wet. I can't bring that in. So let's just pop that over there. Um, this color will actually work almost for everything else that I'm gonna to have to do for any of the details question is if I can manage to keep it. I can even do the shadow and things like that. So what I do need to do is there's this telephone pole that I can actually use the same color with right here. They never quite made it on the edge of the street. They just kind of pop it right in there. And I'm just going to pop in a couple of those in here too. And they're not even necessarily straight either. But oh, the tip on this is beautiful. Okay. So now I can also use this lovely dark on this uh, doorway here. I can always add more dark if I need to. Um, there's a nice window, dark window right underneath here. Okay, and is there a thing? No, there's just kind of a detail here, up here. Kind of goes across like this. And then this window is just basically lines metal. I'm just trying to follow the perspective to make sure I've got the perspective right. 
it turns out this has a bit of a top to it. Just gonna add that there, put a bit down there. And there's, oh, there's a bit of window back here. I'm just gonna mark it like that. Um, don't worry, if I get it down a bit more there. And I'm just gonna draw in a bit of the line to the side of the building. Now, um, still got so much beautiful paint on here, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna fix something there in just a second. I'm just gonna do some shadowing here. And there's a bigger, bigger shadow underneath here. And do that there. And there's a bit about kind of like a little touch underneath here too. Anything else there? No, and now it's more of the shadow underneath here and on the side. And then this actually has wires, or not wires, but the metal. And I believe there was actually a couple of things around there. Oh, I'm getting really excited about using this wonderful point. It's gorgeous. Okay. Underneath here is also a metal doorway. Goes all the way down. And there's a bit of a bar across there. There's more there. There bar. So sometimes it's a bit of a dark area at the base. I'll have to fix some. Um, there's a bit of a shadow here for this plant, and we have to bring some darks in there. Um, there is some shadow. Let me just go back to my original picture here, where these wires, they color the same, but they're actually poles. And I'm just going to add a hint of that on the side of the building. Um, and then there's a lot of wire, so I just want to wait for that. Let's see here, what else am I missing? Go back to my original. I put in some darkness around here on this part of the sidewalk. Kind of brushed it along here. It, it just started there, and then we're just going to do the same thing there. Uh, I'm going to soften that up as a bit of a shadow there. There's a bit of a shadow along here. Hope you can see all this and put that there. And I'm going to start taking some just fun darkness, darker areas out here. This is a bit of a drive area. I don't know if there was. Just pull those out a bit and then pop that there. And what I did too was I ended up putting a little darker color in there. Like that. And then here I added a bit more color coming down in here. Here I ended up with a lot more, I've got too much pink right now. I've got to fix that. Uh, blue. And I'm just going to add a bit more dark there. I did add a bit of a line there too. Oh, and the next thing to do is to add some of the details on this window. So the best way to do that, since I just made this all dark, is to actually work this way. Um, so what I'm going to do now, maybe add a little bit of light, I don't know if that really makes much difference, is start making some lines here that were in the window frames. They do a lot of metal work on the actual windows so that there's some security. So let's try and get this to almost there's a bit brown there. Oops. What have I missed? That's not bad. Come on. There we go. So again, just going in there, popping that in. on the center too. Well, it's not actually the center because I didn't. I, it's off center, and there's these kind of crisscross things, which is 
I don't want to do perfectly. I just want to kind of get the idea that they're there. This is so small, right? Okay. Back again. There's definitely shadow around here that I put in. And there's shadow in here. It's too, too, too purpley. Okay, so let's let's just keep doing what we were doing and add in those little marks. I'll go back to the original here for a second. Uh huh. There was the line down at the bottom in there. The line here. Here too. And this is almost in the complete dark. We'll add that in a bit. I've got to get the better gray. Uh, what did I do for the rooftop here? I actually went with a bit of brick around that rooftop and I haven't touched that yet. So let's do that. So I've got a nice kind of brick color here. So I'm just going to go this. This is the edge of the brick. It's just kind of a little roundish area. Um, not going to really touch too much of the other stuff. Could even just put in a little bit of feeling for that brick. It just kind of goes around there. I could even wash it a bit across just for the fun of it. But I'd have to bring a little bit more darks in underneath here for the shadow. Okay. Um, so having done that, let's just bring that out a bit. Is there any place? Yeah, it's just a little bit in here, actually. And there's a star here, which is just a, a lovely feature that they have, which are these metal, beautiful metal, kind of hanging stars that you often see in different locations. And this happens to be outside, so there's a bit of a shadow underneath here, too. There's shadow underneath there, too, but I'm just going to try and keep some of it light because I won't recognize what it is. Darken that up a bit. That's still wet. But there are three. Can you see? Yeah. There are three. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. If I can. There we go. That'll help you a lot since it's so small. And of course I'm getting sun right over that area and I have no idea which one it is okay well, well we'll work with it best we can here we go um, there is a little bit of a dark cover over top of the, that area and then three kind of individual windows which we're just making a hint of we have all these bougainvillea trees that were in front of it that we have not whoops that's too wet I knew why I was doing that it's too wet Okay, so we have to wait there. Let's see if there's any other. There was another roof in here. I'll just add that. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow under here because it's a kind of a balcony. We have a little color there. Uh, I don't know how. It's kind of purplish. I'm just going to soften and add a little bit of color there. Maybe down here a bit. Um, that white building, there was a little bit of a top to it, so let's just add a little color to that. Here too, here. Alright, now... I can go and find my copper gray now. Where are we here? Okay, let me just pull this up so you can see it. There we go. I'm going to take the gray. Oh, I've got to mix it up. And the gray, all I did was I watered it around here a little bit and I put it into the window for a bit of the shadow. And I just kind of played around with it here. And then did the same underneath there. And just let it play. I can come in a little darker. I'll add some of this other color to it so to make sure that I've actually incorporated the different colors that I've got. I'm going to pop some more gray in there. Let's darken that up around the top there. 
um, I actually put it into the edge there, edge there, how much of the edge there, like that. I even put it underneath there, and I've got to get her in a bit. Um, I've got it coming over down here a bit. I've got it in there a bit. Uh, where else have I got it? I need to darken it in there. I can't do the wires yet. So let's see here. I'm going to come back. Uh, one of the bad habits I have is going back and trying to recreate a color that I don't have when I need it and go straight for the color that I do have rather than sticking to the rules and actually using the colors that I'm supposed to to make that color. So here we go. I happen to have off the view, you can't really see it, I'm just adding in the same colors that I had. I'm trying to get back to my brown. So let me just go back to my Quin Pink. There is my Quin Pink. Add a little bit more Quin Pink here. And my Hansa Yellow Medium. It's coming out. Woohoo. Bad, bad, bad. Let's clean that. Put that in there right away. Try and treat your paints better than I have. I've been transporting them back and forth for classes and stuff, and what happens is they get beat up and banged up, and then they, next thing you know, they're squirting out, which is, can be a real hassle. Okay, so why was I doing all that? Um, this is more phthalo blue here, so that I'm just going to take it out of here and put it back where it was here. I am going back in here trying to get more of a, what they call a brown. This is a beautiful purplish gray, but I need more of the yellow to get it into that. Now, right now it's kind of an olivey, greeny, dark. So I'm going to have to warm it up some red and a little bit more yellow. A little bit more red again. And we got it. Okay, so I'm just going back over the Bougainvillea bit. Got to be careful because it's quite wet from the shadow. I just want a little bit more that it looks like. Is that dry? Looks like a little bit more like a tree and not uh, something else. Not that you're really going to see it. But that brown color does add a little bit of warmth there. Okay. What else do I need? There is an archway back here, but you can't, it's so small back here that I don't think you're going to be able to see that. So let's just lighten that up a bit. Just give the feel of it that it's kind of trying to do something back there. Okay. Um, the pole's okay. Got pretty much all the other stuff going on here. We can add a little bit more dark in here. What about underneath? There was a window here. And, oh, and there's actually this is a entranceway in here. Add, add some more color here. And the doorway is definitely too light. Let's pop more color in there. Not that I'm happy with all that. So, having all said all that, because it's going to lighten up still with the way it is, and you can't see a darn thing. So there we go there. And I'm going to zoom out a bit more, because otherwise you're not going to see anything. Okay. Pull this back a bit here. There. Because that light won't cover there. We're going to put the lady in the shadows. But the first thing we're going to do is give her some skin tone. And you can do that by just putting a little bit of pink, the Quin Pink, and yellow together. So we'll start by giving her a bit of skin tone here. Put her hands in her legs. You don't even have to finish her legs, but you can if you want to. Okay, so I've given her some skin tone. 
and um, so we're gonna have to leave that dry for a bit and now I'm gonna come back in here and finish up this little plant that's over here because it was quite in the shadows it was kind of like a palm or a fern or something that was sitting in there I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the blue feel the blue there was even a bit of shadow underneath. I'll just bring that out there like that. Maybe here. Okay. So now that we've done all that, we just have to wait for it to dry and then we can put some extra uh, lines and stuff in here to, to re represent. Now I did notice that I actually put, I don't know how dark this is, some, a few just, just kind of edges along here. And I just along here. There's actually it kind of curves, it goes down and then curves out. Just to, where the cracks are. Here, in actual fact, let me go back to my original picture. I actually have some right along here a little bit. But it's too greenish, so I'm gonna get my gray. Get that in there. There we go. Gray it down. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. A little bit more gray area here. Oop, that's a bit much, maybe. Here. A little bit more underneath here. Now I put her pretty much in the dark. Sorry, we're having a okay. And what, how I did that was I just basically, still too wet, gave her a bit of a dark hairdo and everything else. But while I'm waiting, I can do some fun things. Just get some wire going here. Where the wire was going, there was this little area here. And here, up into the post here, there's another kind of a little thing that was here. And these wires just kind of went around and attached themselves. Long, and then around here they just kind of go off and then here they just and you don't worry about making them you know like just not too heavy but don't make them all the way through because what ends up happening is if you do uh, your eye will make up for all that so just kind of work that it makes it interesting when oh, there was a couple of little like, wire things around here squiggly things. I don't know. Um, there was a bit more in here with that roadway. Although it looks, it's supposed to be, a building is in here somewhere that actually there's a recess of some sort. And I'm trying to remember where it was. I can hardly tell because there was a garage door. I think it was open here somewhere. But I'm not sure. give this a bit more shadow along here. All right, uh, let's add her, where is she? So all I did was I basically, her hair was in a bun, so I just kind of put her hair in a bun there. She's looking down. I basically put her down there with her hand and let the dress kind of go through and then I just lightened it up on this side where the light was I just but I didn't actually do any color here I just followed through she's got her other hand in the and then I just did a little bit a tiny tiny bit for her shoes I'm gonna take some of that color and just pull it off and try and mix it in with her there. Okay. So doing all that, the only thing I could now, uh, there is a couple things I can do up here. There's some more wires right here, right here, right here. They're all coming into. There's something here. That's a substation, something there. Oh yeah, down here there was those little electrical things there. 
There's some more wires there. There's something that I'm showing here. I don't know why, but that's okay. Um, this definitely I could darken. Right in there. Darken that all up. Same here, darken it all up. Can you see that? Yeah. Darken that up a lot. Darken this up a bit more in here. Darken it up a bit more. Can darken up a bit underneath the plant. Try and get those wires back. Even a little bit more there. Um, let's get some of that, just a little bit more of that roof happening there. Uh, I'm still not happy with how I'm not dark enough in there. And that's too dark. So let's just pop that back there like that. A little bit like that. Okay. Try to go back and just see how much shadow I actually put. I put a little bit behind this bougainvillea bush, but I have to soften it up. One of the things I noticed, the only thing I'm missing is that I haven't got it strong enough for some of the bougainvillea. So let's just pop in pigment and just pop right some more color in there. And just throw it in. It could be a little more fun just dropping in because again, this is further down the street and so you don't expect it to be as as evident there, but here you would probably expect it to be more evident there. Put it around here a bit. Uh, let's drop in a few little, because it kind of kind of goes across, cups up here, goes down there. So here would just be a little bit of extra color in there. Just bring that color forward. Um, where else would we see that? A little bit, maybe more hint along there. Because sometimes the petals actually fall off. So you might see a few little residual petals around here. Although in the original picture, did I even see that? Oh yeah, there are a few there, especially around the side here. Right around, just around there. Maybe a few there. Give it some color just to pop it in there. But. And so I think we've got pretty much our loose scene here. Only thing I have to do is add my John Henry. And so I'm just taking some black and because I happen to have there, I'm just going to pop it right there. And then you won't even know whether it's her shadow or my signature. A little bit of fun with that. And there you have it. It's the lady from Guad.